Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the Motorola Droid Turbo, which is launching for Verizon with some really impressive specs. Now, one of them is a 5.2 inch Super AMOLED display with QHD resolution, which is 1440 by 2560. That's good for 565 pixels per inch. This is powered by a Snapdragon 805 clocked at 2.7 gigahertz with 3 gigs of RAM. We also have a 21 megapixel rear facing camera good for 4K video recording, although there is no optical image stabilization. We also have a 2 megapixel front facing camera good for 1080p video. Now the other big story here is a massive 3900 milliamp hour battery which is non-removable. Now they estimate about 48 hours of battery life out of this, but we're going to have to test that in this video. Now there are two different types of materials for the back panel. You can get the metalized glass fiber which is reinforced with Kevlar. That comes in black or red and is available only in a 32 gig capacity. But you can also get the ballistic nylon version, which is available in a 64 gig capacity in addition to 32 gig. It's only available in black. Personally, I think I prefer this because it gives you a lot more texture on the back panel to grip the phone. But in either case, both materials are designed for durability. All right, so let's go ahead and open up our packaging here. So we have our sleeve and then we have this little clamshell box to open up. And inside is our Motorola Droid. And there I am in the reflection. So let's go ahead and lift this up here. If we flip it over, you can see I have the metalized glass fiber edition, which is black and 32 gig capacity only. All right, so let's go ahead and peel off our screen protector. All right, so let's set that aside for just a moment while we take a look at what we get in the box here. So I'm going to pull off this tray. Inside we have our paperwork, so let's go ahead and pop this open. So again, this is a Verizon phone, so we have some Verizon paperwork here. Get to know your phone, so maybe a quick start guide on some of the services Verizon offers. Global support, information and calling card in different languages, important consumer information, and product and safety and warranty information. So nothing terribly interesting here. Now we do have some interesting accessories in here, including Motorola's Turbo Charger, which is a rapid charger, especially for such a large battery. It's kind of nice to have one of these rapid chargers. This is included at no extra cost. This is actually sold as a $30 accessory from Motorola. But what this does is with 15 minutes of charge, this will provide eight hours of battery life to your phone. So we just have a little plastic on the front, hiding that nice glossy panel with the Motorola dimple right there. Now on the back we'll find all of our specs and toward the bottom we'll find our USB port for charging. And of course we have our standard micro USB charging cable that works with that turbo charger. All right, so let's get back to the Motorola Droid Turbo. First thing I wanna do here is boot it up so we can take a look around. Now there is a new boot animation. As you know, the Droid series was famous for that Droid eye and that Droid sound, but it's different this time. So at the top, you'll see that very large earpiece slash loudspeaker, it's all in one. And you can see there's these little notches at either side. We also have our front facing camera, which is good for two megapixels and 1080p HD video. And then you have all your light sensors, proximity sensors, and that sort of thing next to it. Now, if you look at the edge of the glass, you can see that it is rounded, kind of similar to the Moto X and Nexus 6. Now, down below, you'll find your backlit capacitive Android keys, as well as these dual microphones at the edge of the glass. Now, just like the Moto X, this device uses infrared to map the front of the display. So it can see the presence of your face or your hand. So when you wave your hand in front of it, you can interact with it. So you can actually see the infrared blasters in each corner of the glass display. They're invisible to the naked eye, but the camera can pick them up. Now on the back we'll find our Motorola badge, which is not a dimple like you get with some other Motorola products. And then you have your 21 megapixel rear facing camera with a little pinhole microphone right next to it and dual LEDs on either side. Down below we'll find yet more microphones. Again, a set of dual microphones along with our Verizon Android branding, as well as this little bump out here for the micro USB port on the bottom. Now if you look toward the bottom, you can see the phone kind of tapers to a point and the glass sort of rolls into it. Kind of a nice detail, but it does extend the length of the phone. Now on the right side, we'll find our textured volume and power on and off keys, which are very tactile. Now that volume button is actually hiding the SIM tray, which you can pop off pretty easily. Now if you look at the back of the volume button, there's a little thumbnail port here for sticking your fingernail in here so you can grab it and pull it out. And again, this is a nano SIM, comes completely out, and you can put it back in when you're done changing it if you need to. Now, the only thing you'll find on the top is the headphone jack, and then you can see that curve to the phone on the back. Now, once again, there is no need for an LED notification light, and that's because the entire display is the notification center. So you can see when you twist or handle the device at all, it wakes up and shows you your recent notifications as well as the time. So instead of having to hit a button to unlock your device, you can just tap the screen or move the screen around, tap and swipe down to unlock. It takes you to your home screen. Now, if you have pending notifications, you can see those badges on the screen. If you tap and hold on them, you'll get a preview at the top of the screen of that notification. And if you want to jump to that app, all I have to do is swipe up and act 
activate that app. It takes you right to it. Now you can see up to three of these notification badges on the lock screen. If you have more than that, you can press the more icon and that will show you the other notifications. And when you unlock into those notifications, it basically just takes you to the drop down notification shade. Now, alternatively, just like in the Moto X, you can just wave your hand over the display to wake it up as well. All right, so let's go and take a look at the user interface. Again, we have our camera app, which we can swipe to activate by swiping to the left. Alternatively, you also have another gesture here, which is unique to the Moto series. So all I have to do is twist your device like this, launches right into the camera app, which is very handy. Now, once again, we're running Android 4.4.4. In fact, we can confirm this by going to settings, going about this device at the bottom, and we can see that right here, Android version 4.4.4 KitKat. But of course, we're going to get a lollipop in here by the end of the year, which is very nice. Now, the experience here is actually pretty close to stock, although it is more skin than the Moto X experience. So you can see we have our drop down notification shape, which is pretty similar to stock. You can expand your notifications. You can clear them all by hitting that X. You can go up here for your quick setting toggles. You can see your battery status right here. You can swipe between your available home pages. You can tap and hold on the home page to get to your editor. So you can change your wallpapers. So you can see all the available wallpapers here. You can also tap and hold here to get to your widgets. So you can see all the available widgets here. Again, very similar to stock Android. You can also reposition your home pages like so. So if you want to change which one is the primary home page, all you have to do is move it to the front. Now, in terms of our app store, it's not surprising at all to see lots of apps preloaded here. So you find all the Amazon apps all the way up to Audible. We find lots of Verizon apps in here as well. Of course, we have the standard array of Google apps and some Motorola apps, which we'll take a look at in this video. We have some other third-party apps like NFL Mobile and Slacker Radio. Now, you can get rid of these if you want. So for example, we have this Verizon Protect app here. So if you take it up here, go up to App Info, you can disable it, click OK, click OK, and it's installing the app. So if I go to the app store now, that is gone. So you can continue going through all the apps you don't want that way. Now this comes pre-installed with a widget that reveals some basic information all in one spot here. And when you tap the edges, it kind of spins around and vibrates the phone just to tell you that it's activating here. But you can see it expands out to show you your notifications as well as your current weather conditions. When you tap on it, it takes you directly to that information. So again, if you want your date and time, your alarms and that sort of thing, it's right there. If you want to go to your battery status, it's right there. Your weather conditions, etc. So it's kind of a nice utility. And of course, if you don't want this at all, just tap and hold on it, take it up to remove, and it's gone. Now you're gonna hear me say stock Android quite a bit here, and that's the case as well with these Android keys here. So you have your recent apps, which again is stock Android. So you can see you can swipe your apps to close them. You can tap on them to bring them forward. So nothing fancy going on here. And of course, you can also tap and hold on the home button to swipe up to Google Now. And then we have our back button, which again has no tricks here, just acts as a back button. Now, like a lot of other Motorola devices today, this one can be operated hands-free even if the screen is locked. All you have to say is the launch phrase. In this case, it's, okay, Droid Turbo. What's the weather like tomorrow in Rochester Hills? Tomorrow's forecast for Rochester Hills is 46 degrees with a chance of showers. Now you can do this at any time. So for example, you could just say, okay, Droid Turbo, how tall is the Empire State Building? The Empire State Building is 1,250 feet tall. So the idea here is that the microphone and speaker are sensitive and loud enough to operate this within a large room. So you could be across the room and command this device and it will speak back to you. Now you can modify this under settings. So if you go to settings, go to Moto, you can see we have four categories here. One of them is assist. Now assist are automated actions that are triggered by certain conditions or certain actions. So for example, sleeping, you can silence your device uh, at certain times of day. So you can select those or you can silence only certain things. So you can allow your favorite calls to come through or if somebody tries to call twice. You also have driving mode, so you can toggle on talk to me, so it will read text messages and tell you who's calling if it determines that you're driving. And of course, you could play music when you connect through Bluetooth. We also have our home location, so you can select your current home location, so it will activate certain things like reading text messages or tell you who's calling when you're at home. And of course, you have your meeting settings. This will basically silence your device when you're in the meeting and it determines that by your calendar. So it actually reads your meeting times on your calendar and will automatically silence your device and allow you to auto report apply to messages here, which you can customize. We also have actions here, so we can wave to silence and you can tap on this to explore exactly how this works, so we can try it. So if you're receiving a phone call, you can just wave your hand over the display and it will silence it for you. Now we also have approach for a moto display. So if your device is laying on a table and you go to reach for it or wave your hand over it, it flashes your notifications and the time. 
We also have our display options, and one of them is Moto Display, which again allows you to see your notifications and the time when you pull the device out of your pocket or if you're handling it at all. So it just flashes them on the display. So again, it kind of acts as your notification LED light. Now we can also limit the apps that appear on Moto Display. So for example, you can unselect some of them. Only the ones that really push notifications are selected here, so you can turn them off if you want. We can also enable more privacy, which will prevent the text of emails or messages from appearing on your lock screen. Now under voice, this is where we can manage our launch phrase. Now, like I said, the default one is OK Droid Turbo. Now, you may not want that, so we can manage this under Manage Launch Phrase. So we can change or improve the launch phrase here. So right now, that's OK Droid Turbo. But we could also use OK Google Now to select that one instead. All right, so let's go and customize our launch phrase here. Hello, computer. Now, we can also type in our launch phrase so we know exactly what we're supposed to say here. All right, so let's try this. Hello, computer. What's the weather like tomorrow in Chicago? Tomorrow's forecast for Chicago is 45 degrees with a chance of showers. Now let's take a look at some of the other Motorola apps included, which includes Motorola Connect, which manages your connected devices. That includes the Moto 360, as well as the PowerPack Micro, which is another Motorola accessory, and the Chrome extension, which allows you to receive and respond to text messages and phone calls right within a Chrome browser, which works pretty neat. Now we also have Motorola Migrate, which will allow you to migrate your information from one phone to this phone. So for example, if you have an Android phone, you can transfer your photos, videos, messages, and more just by signing in with your Google account. You also have your iPhone, so you can transfer your content and your calendar from your iPhone. But basically, all you're doing here is logging into your iCloud account using a service that Motorola has partnered with here. Now, the Droid Zap is a way of sharing files between other Droid Zap devices or Chromecast devices, or in my case, the Nexus Player. But basically, what happens is you can select a photo or video to share. So, for example, if I go to Photos here, I can add a new photo. I can either take a photo, I can take a video, or I can take one from uh, the gallery here. So, I can go ahead and select one from my camera roll. Let's go and select that. Click Done here. What will happen is this will upload it to the cloud and allow nearby devices to see it and download it if they want. Again, they have to have this Droid Zap uh, app installed. Now, alternatively, you could broadcast this image or a video to a Nexus Player or Chromecast device. So I have my Nexus Player set up right here and I can see my image right on my TV. Now if we take a look at our settings panel, it's pretty close to stock Android. There's a few things that have been added like the Moto feature, which is also available as an app shortcut here. So if you go to the app, it takes you right to that same location here for the same controls. We also have our Droid Zap control panel here, which allows you to do things like share screenshots automatically. So for two minutes, it will share your screenshots to any nearby devices with the Droid Zap feature installed. Now under sound, you'll find your audio effects with your equalizers here. So you have wired stereo and you can select your profiles from here and you can see your controls for speakers as well. We also have our Motorola ID, which is connected to my Google account. And then you have your Motorola privacy settings. So you can change those if you prefer. Under display, we'll find something called attentive display. So it's basically watch for the presence of your face and will prevent the display from going to sleep if it determines that you're looking at it. Of course, we'll also put it back to sleep sooner if you're not looking at it, so it's one way of saving battery life. Now, you can see how this works. Basically, you just activate this and it's looking for the presence of your face. So if I stand above my camera here, it can see my face and acknowledges it for me. Now, taking a look at the camera app, it's really designed for speed and simplicity. So to take a photograph, you just tap the screen focuses it for you automatically and takes the photograph. So if you want tap to focus, what you'll have to do is activate it from the menu on the side here. That pulls right out. And when you activate this, we get this little tap target, which will focus the scene and exposure for you depending on where you drag and drop it. Then you can tap to take your photograph. You also see we have other controls here like HDR, auto on and off, our flash auto on and off. And then we have our video mode. So we have HD, slow-mo at 720p and ultra hd 4k which we can select here and then we have our panorama as well so you can see when we have 4k video selected we have 4k indicated in the camera app so we can start recording it it starts recording our video we can tap the screen to take a photograph while we're recording video we can pause it and resume it so we can stop that like so we can also zoom in by swiping up like so so we zoom in not pinch in and out you zoom zoom up like so and then you can switch between the front facing and rear facing camera. Now, unfortunately, like with the Moto X, if you ever leave the camera app, it defaults back to 1080p. So you'll have to go back to select 4K all the time if you want to record in 4K persistently. Now, unfortunately, if you're using the phone in this orientation and you swipe in from the left edge here, you can see it brings up Google Now. That's one of the drawbacks of having these off-screen Android keys with that camera interface.
Now we can also scroll up here to change our resolution from widescreen to standard, which is from 15.5 megapixels to 21 megapixels. And then you can turn off your shutter sound and turn off the quick capture feature. Now in terms of the camera quality, it's definitely impressive with a 21 megapixel sensor on the back. You're able to get really sharp images with good color reproduction and just the right exposure for most scenes. Now the only issues I've had with this camera is its ability to find focus in dark scenes. It can't seem to find it, so you have to spend a lot of time kind of refocusing the scene to get the right image. But in low light, it does a pretty decent job, and with that dual flash on either side of the camera, you get a lot of well-lit shots without shadow. So again, because most cameras put the LED flash to the side of the camera, you'll get a lot of shadow on your images. But of course, with a side-by-side -side flash system like this, you do get a lot of red eye. Now in terms of video, unfortunately, without optical image stabilization, 4K video is really rough looking. So it's hard to get really smooth 4K video out of this camera. It would help if it had optical image stabilization, which would make a big difference here. But it does deliver sharp video with good exposure and accurate colors. Now the big story is this really high resolution QHD display, which looks fantastic. That Super AMOLED technology means we get really dark blacks with vivid colors. My only complaint here is that the whites tend to be a little warm on this display. A lot of OLED displays tend to dial it a little cooler. This seems to be the trend with Motorola devices lately. But again, text is really pin sharp and the colors are not too saturated. Now although we have these two speaker grills, only one of them acts as the loudspeaker here, and that's the one on the left side. Now the earpiece seems to evenly distribute across the entire width of the device so the earpiece isn't one or the other. Now let me go ahead and demonstrate the this. Same engine used in the new Mini Cooper. So I can cover up the audio on this side but not this side. Is a more expected 96 kilowatt electric motor. Now, if you take a look at our Geekbench 3 scores, you can see they are marginally better than the Moto X scores. Now, this has 3 gigs of RAM versus 2 gigs of RAM, but this has a 2.6 gigahertz processor versus a 2.5 gigahertz processor. It's the same Snapdragon processor, but it's clocked a little higher on the Droid Turbo. Now, the iPhone 6 single core score definitely beats out the Motorola phones, but you can see the multi core score is bested here thanks to quad cores versus dual cores. Now in terms of performance, because we're running stock Android, it's really quick and smooth with no signs of lag or hesitation. Pretty impressed overall with how well this phone moves around its operating system. So that's one of the benefits of having a close to stock Android experience with a few tweaks thrown in. Now in terms of battery life, they do promise you'll get two days or 48 hours out of this phone and I've been able to do that and better. So pretty impressive overall. So in the end, the Droid Turbo stands out for a number of reasons. It's basically a Moto X that has been taken up a few notches with a QHD display, a 21 megapixel camera on the back, and a huge battery, which definitely bests the Moto X in terms of battery life. The Droid Turbo is also a little more ruggedized thanks to its Kevlar back panel or the ballistic nylon if you go with that. So this is perhaps a little more durable than the metal and leather or wood finishes you may get with the Moto X. All right, guys, so that's going to do for me in this review of the Droid Turbo. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again in the next one.